Next question comes from Bob, and Bob says, how much of being successful in business is winning the game against yourself? Background, through a mastery of online poker back in the day, I realized that the key to success was to win the game against myself. Controlling my emotions, avoiding temptation, and deep thought on new information was the secret sauce. As I have begun the Maximize Your Mindset course in our AO portal, it seems like poker and business could be similar in this sense. Thoughts? Oh, you know, there's countless, and I mean countless books on... Um, mastering the game against yourself, controlling emotions, personal development, battling your inner demons, uh, dealing with fear, dealing with insecurity, lack of confidence, um, self-sabotage. Um, you know, there's just thousands and hundreds of thousands probably of books written on the subject because it's that relevant or and prevalent. So um, how much of being successful in business is winning that? Um, you know, I've never looked at it that way, Bob. I've never looked at it as though I'm, I'm trying to win myself or the game against myself. I most highly, well, actually, I'm sorry. Every highly successful person that I know, and I mean financially successful, because I have friends that are uber successful in life personally, who don't make a lot of money. They're just the most amazing, decent, good, happy, peaceful people you'll ever meet. But they're not driven by high financial rewards. Um, but there's I consider that successful. So if you're talking about successful in the financial sense of business, the common trait that I find from people that achieve those high levels of financial success, contrary to what a lot of people will tell you, is they were initially driven by money. They didn't have it and they wanted to have a lot or they were groomed into it, you know, if they come in if they were in that type of family, but if you look at the success stories like the rags to riches success stories, even this and this is even in the music business, politicians, athletes, they were they did not grow up with a lot of money and they longed to be rich. They didn't understand what rich meant. But the idea of it was I can buy anything I want. I can do what I want. No one can tell me what to do. I can buy any materialistic item, live in any house, travel. They were driven by money. And I don't know if that's the game against yourself. When I think of the game against myself in that regard, I liken that to when those people end up ultimately making a lot of money, they then sometimes can feel alone because they have, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They've ostracized themselves from the, everybody. They have burned bridges, burned friendships, and they think they're, they are just driven by money. It's like, like me because I have a lot of money and they're unhappy inside. And some people deal with that and some people don't. The game of against yourself, in my view, is just the game of happiness. And that is a constant battle. I mean, I, I play that game every single day, um, measuring my happiness and how am I happy? Am I happy? What's making me happy? What's going to continue to make me happy? Um, but that didn't have anything to do with being financially successful and building my last large company. Um, so, yeah, I don't think being successful in business is is has to do with that personal development. That's more personal development. In business, the game against yourself is this. It, it comes into play when you start building your company and you start bringing on a lot of employees and then you start to realize how hard that is if you've never done it and you don't know how to do it and you've never been a leader before. And you start to realize that a leader is very different than this iPad that I am recording this video on. This iPad, when I turn it on, it's gonna turn on. As long as I recharge the battery, it's gonna turn on. When I press a button, it's gonna do what it's supposed to do. Easy, unemotional, it just does. But people aren't that way. 
So as a leader, we have to learn to manage that process of getting people to do the things that the company needs. Notice how I said the company needs, not what I need. And that takes understanding how to become a leader. And so in that regard, you are having to be forced to change yourself or evolve yourself to understand the dynamics of being a good leader. And that can be very ego blowing. It can make you, uh, uh, it can force you to battle those inner demons that you have because you're putting trust in other people to be accountable for the dreams that you want to build. What I mean by that is when you want to have finan high financial success, you have to hire people in order to do that and then they're in control of your financial destiny and that's scary. And so we have to learn that. So that could come into the game against yourself. But I like that question. Um, I've never thought about that as I've been building my company of being successful. I was always laser focused on growing my sales, growing my profitability, and building the company. I never sat back and said, you know, um, it's a competition with it, within myself. I did have to challenge myself like I was talking about here, but I never looked at it that way. So I hope that helps. I'm going to have a couple other mentors answer that for you. All right. Thanks, man.